If at first you don't succeed, try and trig again. That's right, kids. We're going to talk about trigonometric functions and the derivatives of such trigonometric functions. Uh, two fun facts. Uh, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Simple. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So we're going to definitely have those memorized and we're going to use uh, those facts to help us find other trigonometric identities. We're going to start out by doing the derivative of sine x over cosine x. I don't want to go off on a tangent so I'm just going to get right to the problem. <laughs> Tangent. Um, well, I need to find the derivative of uh, a quotient. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. Remember, the quotient rule is... I'm going to move my head again. The quotient rule, if I have uh, d... If I have... I'm just... I'm going to leave my head right there. For now, and I'll probably change it in like five seconds. Uh, if I'm taking the derivative ddx of u over v, I end up with uh, u prime v minus v prime u over v squared. Okay, so in this case over here, and I really didn't leave myself a ton of room, but that's all right. My u is going to be sine x. My V is going to be cosine X. My U prime means take the derivative of sine X, and we already learned that the derivative of sine X is cosine X. My V prime is going to be the derivative of uh, cosine, which I already know now is negative sine X. And uh, cos or v squared is going to be cos squared x. So the derivative of this is going to be u prime v. u prime is cosine x. V is going to be cosine X minus V prime, which is negative sine. So we have a double negative here. U, which is sine X. Oh, another sign. I saw the sign and there's actually two of them. All over v squared, which is cos squared x. Well, let's do a little simplifying, shall we? Cos x times cos x is cos squared x. Double negative means plus. Sine x times sine x is sine squared x. All of that over cos squared x. Now, you learned back in trig or from a video that you watched for the pre-calculus stuff that I did that there is a trigonometric identity. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1. So on the top, I have sine squared x plus cos squared x. That just becomes 1. One over cos squared x, and you also learned from calcul pre-calculus or a video that I made that if I have one over cosine, that's the same as secant. So one over cosine squared is going to be secant squared x. So a third property that you probably should memorize. And I'll place it next to these guys. 
is uh, see this sine over cosine? Well, sine over cosine is tangent. So the third property that you can memorize is the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. And if you decide not to memorize that, hey, it's your funeral. But if I were you, I'd have that memorized. Let's look at a few more. So there it is. Just like I said, I didn't realize I already had it typed out on the following slide, but oopsies, that's all right. Uh, let's find the remaining three. And I really didn't leave myself a ton of space, but uh, that's all right. I'm not super worried. Uh, derivative of cotangent x. Okay. Well, cotangent is one over tangent, so I'm just going to rewrite it like this. Oh, one over tangent x. And so in all of these cases, I'm probably going to use the uh, quotient rule. And the quotient rule is um, sine, oh my goodness, is, uh, why am I drawing a blank here? ddx of u over v equals u prime v minus v prime u over v squared. So in all of these cases, uh, there you go. In all of these cases, I'm probably going to use that, which, you know, in this case is actually fairly easy. Um... And you'll see why. U is my 1. V is my tangent x. U prime is 0. V prime is secant squared x. V squared is tangent squared x. All right, so putting it all together... Putting it all together, and I'll do it up here where I have a little bit more space. Um, I have u prime v, which is going to be 0 times tangent x minus v prime, which is secant squared x, u, which is 1, all over v squared, which is tangent squared x. So that cancels out, and I'm left with negative secant squared x over uh, tangent squared x. Now let's remember what secant squared x is. Secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. So what I have is I have secant squared becomes 1 over cosine squared. Okay. Tangent on the bottom is the same thing as having cotangent on the top. Uh, and cotangent on the top would be cosine squared x over sine squared x. By writing it out this way, yep, that happens. Forgot my negative. Can't forget my negative. So at the end of the day, what I have is 1 over sine squared x, which is the same thing as cosecant squared x. So the derivative, and it makes sense. I mean, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, so why not the derivative of cotangent be kind of the opposite of secant? So that kind of fits our narrative there. All right. Do you have to memorize that? Nah. Would it be helpful if you did? Yep. But I, don't, I personally don't have it memorized, so I think you'll be all right. The derivative of secant is asking the same thing as find the derivative of 1 over cosine. OK. Uh, u is going to be 1. Again, we're using the quotient rule. Uh, v is going to be cosine. u prime is going to be 0. v prime is going to be negative sine. 
And then v squared is going to be cos squared x. Let's plug it into the quotient rule. u prime v is going to be 0 times cosine minus v prime is going to be negative, so a double negative, sine x u, which is 1, over cos squared x. Sorry. So you go away, you become positive sine x, and watch how I write out cos squared x on the bottom. Let me just split it up. See what I did? What is that guy, tangent? What is that guy, secant? And that's that. The derivative of secant x is tan x secant x. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, how about this guy? How about the cosecant? Uh, and looking at this, you probably have a prediction of what cosecant is going to be. If secant x becomes tangent x secant x, then you could probably look at that and say, I think I know what's going to happen. And you're probably right, but we'll see. Let me uh, get this out of the way so there's no overlap. Can't have overlap. What is cosecant? Well, cosecant is the same thing as uh, 1 over sine. Let me put my u's and stuff like that over here. u is 1, v is sine x, u prime is 0, v prime is uh, regular cosine x, close one. And uh, v squared is sine squared x. So using quotient rule, u prime v is going to be 0 times sine x minus v prime u is going to be cosine x times 1 over sine squared x. u become negative cosine x now watch again, I'm going to do it again, and uh, watch how I write out sine over sine x times 1 over sine x. Negative cosine x over sine x is going to be negative cotangent x times... 1 over sine x, which is cosecant x. So most of you probably guessed that you would get cotangent and cosecant. A lot of us probably didn't realize that oh, that number or that negative is going to be thrown in there because you're taking the derivative of a sine function, which gives you a negative cosine. Easy to forget. But uh, there they are. Okay, so we found all six tri trigonometric identities. The derivative of tan x is secant squared x. The derivative of cotangent x is cosecant squared x. And then we have, uh, oh, you know what? This is supposed to be negative. I was looking at this and I was wondering why something looked funky. That should be negative cosecant squared x. Sorry. But that should do it. All of those are in good shape. Now let's take the rules that we just learned and um, do a, looks like we're going to do a product rule problem and then a double product rule problem. Oh boy, I can't wait. I can't wait. So product rule is the derivative 
of u prime v, a regular uv, d dx of uv is going to equal u prime v plus v prime u. And so in this case, u is secant x, v is tangent x, u prime is going to be the derivative of secant x, which we just found out to be tan x secant x. And v prime is secant squared x. So let's put it all together. Uh, the derivative is going to be u prime v, so tan x secant x. That's the u prime. The v is tan x again, plus v prime u. v prime is secant squared x times, uh, where's u? Secant x. which ends up being tan squared x secant x plus secant cubed x. That should do it. Not bad. And some of you might be like, should we factor out the secant x? Eh, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Is tan squared x plus secant squared x anything special? Tan squared x plus secant squared x. I'm asking Siri. It says it's one. Look at that. Well, if that's the case, let me just double check. Uh, no, no. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, how about that? All right, so let's actually finish the problem. I did not know that. Uh, if I bring out a secant, that leaves me with tan squared x plus secant squared x. And I just learned that this guy becomes 1. So the derivative ends up being secant x times 1, which is secant x. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Fun. All right. Oh, you know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I know the answer already. I know the answer, but let's pretend that I don't know the answer. Uh, I'm going to write the answer. Well, never mind. I know the answer. The answer is going to be zero. But let's pretend that I didn't say that. Um, I have cos squared x. So I have... This is basically the same thing as saying cos x cos x, and I'm going to make that in pink, plus sine x sine x, and I'm going to make that in green. Okay, product rule. U is cos x. Uh, U prime is negative sine x. V is cos x v prime is negative sine x. Mm -hmm. u is sine x, v prime, or u prime rather, is cos x, v is sine x, that one, v prime is cos x. Okay, what I'm doing is I said, you're my u, you're my v, so u and v are the same thing. u prime is going to be negative sine x, v prime is going to be negative sine x. You're my u, which is sine. You're my other u, which is sine. So u prime and v prime are both going to be cos x. So u prime v plus v prime u is going to be negative sine times negative sine. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, negative sine times cos x. So negative sine x cos x 
plus v prime u is going to be negative sine x cos x big plus sign down the middle u prime v is going to be cos x sine x plus v prime u, which is going to be cos x sine x. Let's get that sharpie back. Negative sine x cos x, sine x cos x, cancel. Negative sine x cos x, sine x cos x, cancel. Zero. Now, how in the blazes did I take that guy and predict that I would get zero with all this mess in front of us. Well, because sine squared x plus cos squared x is one, which means the derivative of one is zero. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? All right, we're moving back to my face. Moving back to my face. Um, we got one more here. And before I get started on it, I'm going to see if I can make certain things go away. And I'm not sure I can. Actually, I take that back. I can. Uh, sine x. So I'm looking at the top. Sine x. Wow. The lag is bad. Let me try it again. sine x times secant x is the same thing as saying times 1 over cosine x, which gets me tangent. So I'm going to rewrite this guy, and I'm going to put it up here as tangent over 1 plus x tangent x. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. All right, so I have a uh, quotient rule. And while I do quotient rule, I'm going to have to do product rule. I'm going to have to do both. So quotient rule, u is tangent x, u prime is the derivative of tangent is secant squared x, v is 1 plus x tangent x, v prime is going to be 0 plus and I'm going to have product rule, okay? And I'm going to do this in my head. You ready? U prime V plus V prime U. That's my U and that's my V. So U prime V is going to be 1 times tangent X plus V prime U. V prime is secant squared x, u is going to be x. So I did that in my head, did product rule in my head. v squared ugh, is going to be 1 plus x tangent x squared. And I'm not sure I'm going to foil that out. I might not, I might have to, but I might not. So my derivative is going to be u prime v, so secant squared x times one plus x tan x minus v prime u, so I'm going to write it backwards. There's my V prime, which is a mess. There's my U. So I have tangent 
x times tangent x plus x secant squared x all over uh, uh, 1 plus x tangent x squared. So if I factor this out, if I distribute this out rather, I get secant squared x plus x secant squared x tangent x, which does nothing for me, minus tangent squared x, uh, minus tangent secant squared x. So things disappear. So I am going to distribute that. Secant squared x plus x secant squared tangent x minus tangent squared x minus x secant squared x tangent x all over 1 plus x tangent x squared. You cancel out. And I... <laughs> secant squared minus tan... Uh, what is secant squared minus tangent squared? I forgot the x. What is secant squared x minus tangent squared x? Okay, I found this. So that entire numerator, after all of that, No need to foil the bottom. And I think that should do it. <laughs> I thought wrong. Uh, okay. No big deal. Um, the derivative. Oh, and I'm plugging in pi when I'm done, it looks like. All right, so uh, f prime x is going to be the derivative of secant squared x which becomes tangent x secant x in order to do the second derivative in order to do the second derivative i need to do a uh, product rule so you would be tangent uh, v would be secant u prime would be secant squared x v prime would be tan x secant x so f double prime of x is going to be u prime v um
plus V prime U. So U becomes secant cubed X plus tangent squared X secant X. Let's plug in pi. So we're going to get secant cubed pi plus tangent squared pi times secant pi. Secant cubed pi plus tangent squared pi times secant pi. The answer is negative one. Neato. Neat O. Okay. Will that do it now? Hey, all right. Good job, everybody. All right. Well, that's that. That's that. Uh, one more section, I believe, to go in this chapter, and then we're done. Then we're done. Okay. Bye.